justice throughout the months and years of abuse. Nature will raise up and make an effort to overcome this problem, then headaches, chills, fevers, nervousness, and many other diseases will be manifested because we have kept following a way that was not in harmony with God, following our wrong course of eating and drinking. And how do we do that? By not having a basic knowledge of what food do to the body, drinking with our meals, eating denatured, devitamized, demineralized foods, eating foods with stabilizing chemicals and preservatives. And we think we can put all this in the system and manifest a healthy body because we profess the name of God. If you violate the natural laws, you violate the moral law. When will we understand this? We have a merciful Savior, and he wants to save us. Just as faithful as he wants you to keep the Sabbath, he wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be spiritual giants. He also wants you to be physical giants also. And you can be that. God has given us ample amount of knowledge to be able to do that. So it is not by smothering the symptoms. And that's what basically what we do, cover it up. But by removing a cause of these symptoms, when they themselves would naturally and automatically disappear. So what is the cause? Principally, the cause of most of our problem is waste. Most of us are filled with morbid mucus, undigested decay. The reabsorption of this deadly demon of toxin cannot help, but lay at the foundation of all our miseries. Oftentimes, as I've looked at the residue of that morbid mucus and undigested decay that we get out the colon, I stand in amazement that man can live a year, two, ten. The real, real circulation of the deadly demon, demon at the foundation of all our misery. People, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. Let us present God a decent place to tabernacle in. How dare any of us invite the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to live in a cesspool of filth. You wouldn't even do your enemy like that. So invite God in. Cleanse this temple. And let God have a decent place to tabernacle in. And in doing that, you will rid yourself of the encumbrance of all these problems that you're faced with. Today, this condition is known among health reformers as toxemia. That's auto-intoxication. That means a person is drunk on their own filth. But this, they do not mean germs or excretion of germs, but a general condition of poisoning brought on by excess of putrefied waste material in the bloodstream and the body generally. When this Down syndrome is where there's a missing chromosome or damaged chromosome. And I'm going to tell you something. When a child has Down syndrome, it doesn't mean, matter if they're black, white, Chinese, or white. They all look alike. They all look alike twins. And the reason because they all have some problem with a particular chromosome. But there's hope. I work with sickle cell anemia. And that's a genetic problem. And they tell me that there's no cure for sickle cell anemia. I totally beg the difference. There is no disease that God can't cure. And God has given his people this superior knowledge in the gospel message. Do you think you'll be that less inferior in the health message? No. God don't expect his people to go to the world to gain the spiritual knowledge. Then why do we have to go to the world to gain the knowledge of how to regain our health? God has made us the head and not the tail. And I know Down syndrome, sickle cell, they can be reversed. Keep in mind the life of the flesh is in the blood. It may take generations. A generation for red blood cells is about 120 days. Do you know that every 30 days you get a brand new heart? And many of you are saying, what are you talking about? I've been had congested heart failure for 50 years, and you're talking about I get a brand new heart every 30 days. You do. You get a brand new set of lungs every 45 days. You get a brand new body every seven years. What I'm simply telling you, that God so architect the human body that as one cell dies, another cell takes its place. He is so magnificent in his arrangement of things that your heart never miss a beat. 
As your one cell dies, another cell takes its place, and our heart is being renewed every moment of our life. That's why we can make changes. That's why the body can recover itself. God has put the curative process in us through his grace. You cut yourself, you heal up. That curative process is in all of us. And conditions such as sickle cell, lupus, Down syndrome, it may take many generations of the cell, but if you be faithful, God will honor your efforts. And you need to be able to, when you're out witnessing, you need to be able to be aware of problems such as herpes. I tell you, herpes is a plague. I'm running across more young people with herpes than I've ever seen in my life. It is the number one problem among young people. And it's so easy to spread. It can be on your hands. And young people, I want you to look at this. Because as you interchange with your friends and you, you come in close contact, they may have a contagious disease. You don't know it. And you can be just spreading it along as you go. Here's one, HIV of the mouth. These are the conditions of disease of the now generation. The now generation, they may be the smartest so-called, but they are the most diseased generation it ever been. Ringworms, work with a lot of ringworms. Children like to get out and play in the dust, you know, in the dirt. And animals like to excrete and urinate on the grass and the dirt. And many times the children out there playing, they're picking up parasites from the animals. And children don't wash their hands, they don't. And sad, a lot of grown people don't wash their hands when they go to the bathroom. They don't. That's why I don't eat in restaurants. I'm sorry, I may look a little fanatical, but I do not eat in restaurants because I don't believe people wash their hands. Now, I'm not telling you what to do. You continue to do it. But if you, next time you watch people when they go to the bathroom, they come in there, use the bathroom, go right out, don't even wash their hands. So you go right here with it. But anyway, here's the ringworm. That's a parasite. And you can see these little parasites on a person's face. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When I was a kid, my granddaddy had a hound dog. And the hound dog came down with a condition they call manes, where it just eat all the hair off the dogs and the animals. They got sores all over them. And they said, Mr. George, you ought to take that dog somewhere and shoot it. Papa George said, I ain't going to shoot that dog. I love that dog. Papa George, I'll never forget him. He took a, a wash tub and he filled it up with old motor oil, and he bathed the dog in old motor oil. And two weeks, the dog was cured. I'd never forgotten that. I had a dear friend of mine named Brother Frank O'Teller, beautiful medical missionary. He came down with the flesh-eating disease, Daphocatus A. It was eating big chunks of flesh off his body. And he smelled like a dead man. And he asked me, he said, Brother Wilson, have you ever seen anything like this? And I said, the only thing I've ever seen like that was my granddaddy had a hound dog. He said, what did he do? I said, he put motor oil on me. He said, put the motor oil on me. And after convincing, I sponged him down with motor oil, and God healed that man of Staphylococcus A, and I've been using it ever since. Now you want to know, well, what in the world is uh, motor oil going to do? Well, most of your drugs that's in the drugstore are made from petroleum products, especially your skin uh, medication. The cortisone, they get it from petroleum products, from motor oil. And by taking the motor oil and rubbing it on there, it wiped out that condition totally. Here's somebody with parasites. Parasites is the number one problem. I'm telling you, most people in this church right now got parasites and don't even know it. Here's a very drastic case where the worms are calling out this young boy's mouth. All morbid action are evidence of a remedial effort of nature to overcome the morbid condition or expel the morbid material. So it's just simply saying that all conditions is the body's attempt to try to clean it up. Now, as I get ready, I'm sure I'm getting close to the end of my time here. Uh, I want to let the physician teach the people that restorative power is not in drugs, but it's in nature. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from the condition that results from a violation of the laws of health. Do we really understand that? Because if we understand that, 
then you will not be in opposition to what I've just shared with you. Disease is an effort of nature. So that's telling me disease is not a bad thing. To free the system, disease is trying to correct the problem from condition that results from a violation of the laws of health. All this came from our what? Violating the laws of health. In case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained. We should try to figure out what have, what have brought it on. Healthy, unhealthy conditions should be changed. Wrong habits corrected. Mr. Hillen, page 127. When a person has a cotylovascular problem and they get angina pains, that's because as the blood is going through those arteries and it's running into some kind of blockage, it causes pain. In other words, here comes the blood and here, here's the blockage. The blood is coming through, it hit a blockage and it bags up like that. Every time it bags up, guess what? You get an angina pain. And the more forcibly do it, the greater the pain, the finally you can have a heart attack or some major problem. Eventually, as it continues to hit the blockage, it'll find its way through and then the pain is gone. But the condition is not remedied. How are you going to do it? You're going to have to get on a complex carbohydrate diet. Stop all this fried food that is increasing your cholesterol and triglycerides. Get more exercise. And I tell you, our brethren, I speak this to you. I tell you, before I make this comment, take a look at this right here. May be caused in part by what we eat. Oh, they don't think they have any. They keep... Now, I always tell young people this. I said, you want to know your legacy? I said, look at us. I said, you will become what we are if you continue to follow the same steps we're following. If we continue to lead our children, if we got arthritis, high blood pressure, diabetes, we obese, we got all them problems, don't you know, they will inherit this legacy. That's why we must now change for them so that they won't inherit our poor uh, choices. He goes to the operating room and I put him to sleep and the surgeon opened up his chest. And from these arteries, he began pulling out yellow, greasy deposits of fatty material called atherosclerosis. You know, if you... Now, doctors have done this procedure thousands and thousands of times. And every time, the nurses and doctors look at it and they said, this person been eating too much fat, too much grease, too much fried chicken. But they never said too much tofu, too much broccoli, too much vegetable salad. Maybe we should learn something from that. May God bless you and keep you. I don't mean to fuss at you. I have a tough job. I just want to let you know that. I have a really tough job. Uh, I get a chance to deal with the kind of Christians, Seventh-day Adventists, people in the world that you don't. I normally have the last three months of a person's life. And they come in hope of trying to find recovery. Most of the time, they don't have much left. And I pray God that I don't see you on those terms. But if I happen to meet you, I'll do everything I can to help you. But keep in mind, you can make my work a lot easier by making some changes. And I always tell people this. I told the people in London, I don't need no more business. All right? I really don't need no more business. Have you ever seen somebody trying to stop work? I'm trying to stop. After 36 years of this, I would like to take a vacation. But because you continue to eat the way you eat and live the way you eat, you're keeping me very busy. May God bless you and keep you. And thank you.